Hello and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you from Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers Instructor. But you don't need silver sneakers and you don't even need to be a Yellow Springs resident to enjoy this exercise program. Chair Interval Training will help build your stamina, your cardiovascular and respiratory, respiratory uh, endurance, as well as strength in your major muscle groups. You don't need anything but your body and a sturdy chair, but if you have hand weights, today we'll be using a big jug filled with the desired amount of water for our resistance training, and we'll use a rubber ball. Again, if you don't have those things, you can benefit greatly, whether you are remaining in your chair by choice or by need, or standing up and sitting down, fight, fight, fight. We are going to get stronger and I need to remind you before you begin this exercise program or any new exercise program, please consult your physician. If you feel dizzy or out of balance at any time, it's recommended you return or remain in that chair. So get some water, clear space, and let's get moving, shall we? All right, I've got some water. I've got my weight, my ball. I'm going to place that underneath. We're going to start on our feet. I'm going to tuck this under my seat and tuck that ball where I can grab it. But if you can't anchor those things and they get under your feet rolling around or moving, just place them off to the side and make sure that you've got a safe area and you never get too far away from your chair that you can't use it as your balance check. So, Let's play a little music and move. So again, whether you're seated or standing, this class, this exercise program is designed to increase your ability to do activities of daily living. It's also designed to reduce your risk of falls. So as I said, make sure you're close enough to your chair you can use your peripheral vision and you can touch that chair and keep it within your sights. Peripheral vision needs to be exercised and we'll work on that towards the end of the class too. But let's use our best posture to make our movements easier. Stacking ears over shoulders over hips. Elongating our torso makes more room for our our lungs to fully expand and deliver more oxygen to our working muscles and the heart. Sounded like a physiology <laughs> lecture there. Anyway, start out gradually, go at your own pace, and if anything hurts, please don't do it. As you march, notice your arms are swinging in all position with your leg movements, ideally. But let's check and make sure by slowing our march down and then freezing. Our right knee is up as well as our left arm and then other side, right arm, left knee, a little faster and just march it out. Getting those opposite limbs moving helps better connect our brain's hemispheres and then we're coordinated better. And when we're coordinated better, we move better and we reduce our risk of falls. True. Okay, widen your stance out. And let's sink into this hip, knee, ankle flexion just a little. See how it feels to do a little mini squat. Getting your hips back, keeping your head and chest up. Good. Then just push up into your right toe, ball of the foot, and then the left. Nice and slow, lift one shoulder, then the other. Everything feeling good? I hope so. You can always go slower, or if you prefer, we can speed it up a little and just go to the tempo of the music. So you always have that choice to just slow it down. You can round that shoulder with a small range of motion or bigger. So that's another choice you have is you can make your range of motion smaller. 
and make it better for you because you're the only one who knows how you're feeling. So please go at your own pace and you can always even substitute a movement for one of the things that we're doing if something I suggest doesn't suit you right now. Let's see how it feels to rotate through our spine. Today we're going to be bringing back a little bit of our fighting or our kickboxing. If that's not your favorite thing to do, don't worry. We vary the workout frequently because variety is good for your body and your mind. All right, now. Let's preview a little bit of what we'll be doing with our fighting. Here we are right next to the right side of our chair. Let's get our right foot a little bit behind the left. You can keep your left hand on the chair. We're going to do a jab knee lift series. We're going to jab three times with that right hand. And then we're going to lift our knee once a little faster. Jab, two, three, lift the knee, jab two, three, lift the knee. It's actually a cross because it's coming across our midline. If you didn't need that left hand on the chair, you could bring it up and pretend to guard your face. Engage your core. And we'll do it one more time. And of course, later on, we might do it faster. But we're just warming up. And we should be able to take those punches to the front and then sometimes to the side and an elbow thrust to the back. And we'll do all of those things with our kickboxing to get our heart rate elevated, work on balance and footwork, and much, much more. All right, let's see, what else did I have in mind? Hmm, I think that'll do it. We'll, we'll do a lot of that and plus in between we'll use our speed bag and an imaginary jump rope. So stretch your mind and now that we've got our body and our blood a little bit warmed up, we're going to continue to warm up with some dynamic stretches in the chair. So get your body close to the front of your chair, actually feeling the chair with your heels. That way as you get seated, you can get your hips back, keep your head up, and feel confident that if your knee buckled or you lost your balance, you'll end up right in the chair and not smack dab on the floor. Squatting is one of our really best body weight strength exercises, and it's also something that we need to do for activities of daily living. If you can't squat, if you can't squat because of an uh, orthopedic challenge, you can do a smaller range of motion or substitute a different movement, but just keep moving. It's so vital for your health. All right. Now, whenever we're seated, that's the best time to get a drink. And when you do get something down low, whether you're in your chair exercising or outdoors working in a garden, coming up soon on that. You'll want to support your lower back by bracing with your abdominals and your arm on something sturdy. So step to the side, lean to the side, and here's to your health. Plenty of water. Okay, so sitting near the front edge of our chair for some dynamic moving stretches. Let me make sure you can see my feet. Sit tall, and let's rehearse those patterns with our, the kickboxing patterns with our left arm. Just to continue warming up, we're gonna cross, cross the body three times, and then we're gonna lift that right knee. Boom, cross, 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 knee, cross, cross, cross. Pull your navel in, breathe. Now, Here's what it look like to the side. Jab, two, three, kick. You gotta have to lean over and pull your navel in and brace. Jab, two, three, 
Okay, just one more like that. Good, and this is what it looks like when we elbow back. Ugh. Elbow, elbow, elbow. And you'll notice I'm varying which leg moves. That way, we get, we don't overload one side too much. Okay, I just wanted to show that to you because we'll do all that several times over. But engage your core and walk your toes and heels out. Good. Tap your heels there and tap your heel, heels of your hands on your lap. Good. Now walk your hands and feet in and do the same. Tap your heels. Good. Walk them out. This time you can take your hands off your lap. Tap. Maybe out and in and walk them in. Working those ankles and wrists. Good. Stay here and lift your toes. Tapping your toes, keeping the heels down. Excellent. Walk them out again. And tap your toes. And wave hello. Good. That was a little different. Trying to vary it. Keep those knees and toes pointing the same direction as you hinge forward at the hips a little. And gently open the thighs for a little stretch here. Now, if you like, shoulder stretch. Take it from the back pocket to the front. <sighs> oh, the shoulder. Walk those toes and heels together. Sit tall again. Pull the navel in and extend that right leg. Inhale, lengthen your torso. Keep the long, strong spine as you hinge forward. Reach towards me now. Say hello. Lift those toes and fingers. Waving slowly with your foot and your hand. And sit tall. Pull the navel in. Draw the knee towards the chest. And draw circles with that right toe. One way than the other. And again, if the hip does not like to flex that much, you can do that limbering ankle circle on the ground. Pull the needle in as you sit up towards me and stretch out the left leg. Support on the right lap. Shoulder doesn't like this full range of motion. Bring it in, but keep your back long and strong. Bring your nose towards me. Keep your chin up, figuratively and literally. Say hello again. Toes and fingers up and down. Up and down. Excellent. Good. Now sit tall. Pull the navel in as if you're zipping up tight pants. And this supports your lower spine. Drawing the knee towards the chest is stretching the gluteals and the hip muscles and the lower back. Circling the ankle is getting it ready for more activity. Other direction. Ankles are very key to our balance. And if you've ever hurt one, you know it's a bad joint to injure. It hurts a lot. Ow. Let's take a deep breath and check in with ourselves. Opening your chest and shoulders as you inhale. Exhale and arch your back, pulling your navel in towards your spine as you exhale. Inhale up. When I say check in with ourselves, I want you to think of your intensity while you exercise as a scale of from one to 10. We're going to shoot for a target range of four to seven, possibly eight. Eight will feel like you can't continue at that pace for much longer. You'll probably need to slow down. Four feels like I could continue at this pace. I feel great, if that makes sense. So we're probably at a one, two, or maybe a three right now. Let's see if we can get up to a four, five, six, seven while we're either in our seat or on our feet. Okay? So. We're going to use our fighting patterns. We're going to start on the right, but I wanted to show you what it looks like in the seat. If you know you want to be on your feet, 
Take your time, get situated on the right side of your chair. You'll be using your right hand to do a cross punch, pulling the navel in, keeping the chin up. You'll be using your left hand on your chair to make sure you don't fall down if you need a balance check. You'll be using your left knee. So let's get our uh, stance here. We've got our left knee a little bit ahead of the right, and we've got our weight equal in both feet, okay? Ready? Let's punch three times. Cross, cross. Exhale on that cross, and then pull that knee up. Cross, we're going slow. Good. Pull that knee up. One more time, slow. Breathe. Put your energy into it. Now, a little bit faster. Cross. Two, three. Hold the navel in as you lift that knee up. Use the chair for your balance. Two, three. Good. Keep punching. Keep fighting. I'm going to transition to my feet to get with you. Keep going. Punch. Cross. Cross. Knee. Really put your hip into it. So we're shifting our weight, if you notice, to that right rear leg whenever we pull that knee up. This is at tempo. Good, we're gonna do one more at tempo, and then if you think about it, faster. Cross, 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 knee. Cross, 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 knee. Now I'm using my hand on my chair, but if you don't need it, you know you. One more at this quick speed. All right, you don't have to make the sound effects, <laughs> but it does help to engage your core. So have fun. And we're going to do that again, but this time we're going to use our right arm out to the side. And we're going to use our right leg to do a low kick. Low height wise, but power if you feel it. So make sure you got your chair in your left hip pocket. Get down low and get ready to jab to the right. So jab, 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 right kick, jab, jab, jab. Get your body engaged and your brain too. Jab, jab, keep that core engaged. You gotta breathe, but brace with your belly to support your spine. Good. How about two more at tempo? One more at tempo, and then if you like, we can go fast. Here we go. Jab, two, three, kick. Pull the navel in. I forgot to jab. <laughs> jab. How are you doing? Jab. Come on, you can do it. Do your best. Do it at your own pace. Maybe two more times. Last time. Good. Woo, march it out. All right, we're gonna go one more angle here. We did a front, we did a side. Make sure you still close it up to your chair to use it. Think of someone behind you. It's for self-defense. A very effective way to protect yourself if someone came up behind you would be to throw an elbow. Elbow strikes are hard. And you won't get hurt either. So and even if you don't like to think about self-defense, think about this as being exercise. And we're using different things. So we're gonna throw three, I'll do it super slow. Three right elbows, there's one, two, three, and then a back kick with the left leg. Three right elbows, pull the navel in, and kick. Okay, so three right elbows, Kick, three, two, one. Kick that left leg back as if you're stomping on someone's instep, which is a very effective self-defense move. I'm using my chair as a balance check and you can too, but if you don't feel like you need it, challenge yourself because it's right there if you need it. Two more at this tempo. 
Kick hard if you feel it. And if you want, we'll go faster. Elbow, two, three, kick. Elbow, two, three, stomp. Don't actually stomp the ground. Breathe, but brace your abdominals. Two more. You can do it. Good, march it out. We're gonna do that whole series, if you please, if you're feeling it, on the other side. But let's check in for our intensity level. How do you feel on our scale of one to 10? Feel like a four or five? Great, keep going. If you feel like an eight, slow it down or consider sitting down. We're gonna use our imaginary speed bag, punching bag, and we're gonna use our imaginary jump rope but we never have to leave the ground. Okay, so put your weight and just sort of shift it right and left, staying kind of soft in your hips, knees, and ankles. And imagine a little punching bag, all about nose high. And we're going to just punch it right, left, right, left. Don't punch your nose. Now a little faster, right, left, right, left. Good, you can stay at this speed, or you can do it a little faster, right, left, right, left, right, left. Got it? You can go higher or lower, it's up to you, you and your comfort zone. Faster, right, left, right, left. Brrr, other way, reverse. How you doing? Good, all right, let's take our imaginary jump rope. Same thing, we're gonna start with a slow jump rope. You can shift your weight side to side, you can march it out, you can jump rope in your chair. We're going just that tempo, and we're jumping front, skipping rope. Ready, if you want, you go faster. If you like, you can go even faster. Here we go. Breathe. How about backward? Slow it down. Good. All right. We got a little bit of speed work in there. But we are going to do our fight pattern one more time. Over here on the left. How are you doing on our scale of 1 to 10? Are you doing okay? Are you doing great? Are you doing a little bit out of breath? You can tone down the range of motion or keep it at a slower tempo. All right, so here we are on the left side. Our right knee is a little bit ahead of that left. Get your weight equal in both feet. Sink down into your athletic stance or your triple flexion. We got a right hand on our chair. We're gonna jab slow across the body three times and then lift that left right knee. Jab, jab, jab. Now to tempo, jab, two, three. Really engage your core, especially when you drive your knee up. You've got your chair there. You can keep your hand on it the whole time. But if your balance is rock steady, you can see the chair so you know where it is if you need it. Keep it in your peripheral visual field. Good, one more at tempo and then if you like, we can try it a little faster. Jab, two, three, actually cross, two, three, hold. Whoa, this is pretty athletic. I'm feeling it. You can always slow it down or make it small, but challenge yourself at the appropriate level. How about one more time? Pow, good, take a breath. Woo. You ready to try that jab to the side? Check your chair. Jab three times, slow. Two, three, and side kick. Jab. I'm showing it at this slow speed so we can rehearse it. And you got choices. Now tempo. Jab. Two, three, 
kick, jab. You can keep your hand on your chair if you like. Jab, two, three, kick, jab, two, three. We're balancing on that right leg as we kick. We're engaging the core as we kick. And make sure you're breathing. Jab, two, three, kick. Good, one more at tempo, and then if you like, a little faster. Jab, two, three, kick. Now you've got your chair there if you need it. Don't kick the television. Don't kick the coffee table. Four more. Three more. Two, you can do it. One, take a breath. Woo! We're shooting for a 10 minute aerobic activity period or interval because research shows that that's when it begins to really add up to give us better stamina. Heart and lungs need to be strong. All right, so we're gonna use, we use the front plane of motion, the side, square up to your chair. We're gonna throw a left elbow and a right rear kick. Got it? Slow it first, elbow two. Three, kick, elbow, two, three. Got our chair if we need it. It helps to actually, it helps um, our balance. It gives a little bit of a challenge to our balance. If we watch where our foot is going and where our elbow is going. You don't have to turn your neck very far, but stretch your eyes. And this will change your visual field and challenge your vestibular and ocular systems. More on that later. I somehow got off tempo, but let's try it one more at tempo. And let's go fast, two, three, kick, fast, two, three, kick, boom. You don't have to make the sound effects, but breathe. I am feeling this. Keeping the core tight is really essential. Keeping close enough to your chair. Woo, one more time. All right, take a deep breath. I think we've almost satisfied the 10 minute um, goal of being aerobic. But before we transfer to our chair or transfer to the focus on strength training, Let's get our hardworking calf muscles a little stretched out. You can, if you're seated, walk your left heel back a little bit and press the heel to the ground. If you're standing, you could do it a little bit better. But you don't have to stand up to get a little bit of a calf stretch. You just have to press the heel to the ground gently and lean forward while you keep that heel pasted on the ground. Whew. Now the other side, you want to get into and out of your stretches slow, nothing too perky jerky or too fast. That's when we tend to be more likely injured is when we move too fast. But there is great value to moving fast on purpose. That's why we incorporate speed into our workout, but you have to do it mindfully. All right, remember, if anything hurts, I'm counting on you to modify that movement, but just keep moving. We're gonna, our first movement as we transition to the chair and to our strength work is our squat with body weight. So line your heels up to the chair legs, feel them. That way, you don't have eyes in the back of your head. As you hinge your hips back, you know the chair is there for you. This is why you wouldn't want to use a chair with wheels for this unless they could be firmly and securely locked. And that is a possibility, especially with our assistive devices. Good, so maybe do one to as many as 10 body weight squats. That's a good recipe for strengthening your thighs and hips. And if we add a little water to the recipe, We'll be able to do them longer, so take your time. Brace, step to the side, lean to the side as you get a little sip of water. Or maybe your water's across the room on a table. Take your time. 
Stay hydrated. Hydration equals happiness. Okay, we are going to do a little bit of work with our ball and our weights. So let's see if we can get that ball and the weight on our lap. Make sure if you're using a jug of fluid, make sure that the lid is on tight. I'm gonna move back a little so you can see my feet. In fact, I'm gonna turn ever so slightly to the side so you can see better what I'm doing. But you can just stay put. What we're going to do here is keep this weight jug in our right hand and we're going to place the ball under our right leg. So I'm turning to the side just so you can see a little bit of what's happening. Now with that jug on the right knee and supporting your back with the left arm on the left thigh, just squish the ball a bit. As you do this, pressing with one foot into the ball, engage your core, feel it tighten, and that tightening of your muscle or the contraction against the resistance of the ball is strengthening your hamstrings and your gluteals. Yay! All right, now, if you keep a nice brace with the left arm on the left lap, you could take your weight and reach for those right toes, pull your navel into your spine, and Press the ball as you roll, squeezing that elbow straight behind you and squeezing the shoulder blades together. Don't forget to really press into the ball. And now you've got a total body exercise for the right side and the core. One arm rows strengthen the upper back, rear shoulders and biceps. And I told you the leg presses help Strengthen the hamstrings and glutes. So do your best. The goal of our strength training sets is to feel done, like maybe an eight or a nine on a scale of one to 10. Don't be concerned, my cat's coming through. Come on, get up on your couch there, baby. And I'm gonna show you the other side now. So keeping that ball down there on the ground, I'm going to alter the angle of the chair a little bit. Put that ball under my left leg. Situate it knee over ankle over ball and test with that one leg press. See how that feels. Mindfully engage the core. I forgot to set that, that jug right there on top of the left knee so I can use my right hand to brace. All right, you've got a choice. You could just do the leg press, or you can reach, brace, hinge slightly forward, reach for the left toes, and row. Exhale as you row. So don't forget to drive the foot into that ball, strengthening the hamstrings and glutes. Don't forget to squeeze the shoulder blades together behind you as you point that elbow straight behind. Do your best. Trust your body. If something gives you a sharp, sudden shooting pain, that means stop. If you're just approaching a dull, achy, burning sensation, that means we completed the set and we approach momentary muscular fatigue. That's good. That's when our muscles get stronger. Stay seated. Keep that ball behind between your legs on the ground. But scoot your bottom to the front edge of your chair. Just put your jug on your lap here if you would. You can hold the handle equally with both hands if your hand size and handle size permit or you can just kind of cradle your weight. If you have two separate hand weights, put them together to stabilize them and bring them close to your chest. So I'm gonna cradle mine like this. We're gonna pull our navel in, 
and squeeze. Let's wait. First, let's get our heels going. Put that ball right between your heels. Squeeze your heels together without letting your knees knock. So I'm going to put this bottle between my legs to show you that my knees are not coming together. It's just my heels. Can you see that? So we're squeezing with these inner thighs. Now, we're going to pull that jug close to our heart, tuck our tailbone under, and lean back. As you come up, squeeze the heels together. As you come back, keep that belly button, that navel pulling strong to your spine. So we're strengthening the inner thighs with that ball squeeze. We're strengthening our core with this sit-up or this abdominal curl-up. Now if you want, we could do some overhead chest presses, shoulders, triceps, and chest. And that is a big exercise. So do your best. That's been about three presses. We're going to go for 10. If you, if you feel able, that's five. We're halfway home. Six. Do your best. Seven. Eight. If you need to stop, that's not failure. That's success. Nine. That means you fully challenged the muscles. Great. Okay. One more exercise, but let's take our time to get that ball over to the side and up. If you can, put it just behind you, wedge it in the chair, or put it where it won't get under your feet. We're going to do a wide-legged, halfway back in our seat, upright row. So you can grab the handle. Keep your head, chin up, but hinge forward halfway towards your lap with your torso. And then sit up, push your heels into the ground, and lift your elbows. This weight will never go any higher than your collarbone. It should also be close to your chest and body. Now, if that feels good and you want to add a squat, your hips come up as your weight comes up. Your hips go back and reach for the chair as your weight goes down. Keep your chin up. Focus on a point across the room. This is an all body, very, very uh, functional movement. This is how you would pick up a heavy box or a full laundry basket. And I'm about done. How about you? Woo! That strength work creates a lot of heat. Muscles are mostly water. And when we use them, whether we're doing aerobic exercise or anaerobic, that is cardiovascular or strength, we've got to replenish our systems with water throughout, little sips. So. I like water. Some people don't, so you can add a little lemon juice or cucumber slices or other low sugar or no sugar things that make it more desirable to you, but do get lots of fluids. All right, we're going to do our fighting pattern again. Yes, but we're going to throw a little change up in there. And we're going to do three kicks, or knees, and then one punch. Here's what it looks like in the chair. But those of you who know you want to be on your feet, take your time right now. And go ahead and get up on the right side of your chair, please. Those of you who are in your chair, great. Sit towards the front edge and engage your core. If you're standing, make sure you can touch the chair with your left hand because we're going to be shifting our weight a little and you need a balance check. So if you are in the chair or in the air on your feet, get your left foot slightly ahead of your right. And remember, we're going to do three left knees real slow and then one cross. All right, you ready? Real slow, couple times. Knee, use your chair. 
knees, knees, and cross. Do it again, real slow. And cross. Ready to tempo. Knee, two, three, cross. Knee, two, three, cross. Now you keep on working, keep on punching, keep on fighting. I'm gonna transition to my feet. Keep going. Knee, two, three, cross. Knee, two, three, cross. One more time at tempo. If you like a little faster, this is hard. Up, up, up. Hold it up, up. Hold it up, up. Good, you can just pulse it or just balance. Two, three, punch. Balance, two, three, punch. Two more. Use that chair. That's hard, I get it. I felt that right here, I'm sure you did also. So we're gonna open this hip up and use the other one. There's a method to my madness. <laughs> Make sure you can touch the chair with your right, your left hand, sorry. We're gonna be doing our side kick three times, slow, two, three, and then our side jab to the right. Do it slow again. Now, if you want, you can just tap your toe down as a kickstand, or you can step on it. Now, tempo, kick, two, three, jab. Oh, that's fast, I'm sorry. Kick, two, three, jab, kick, two, three, jab. Use your chair, it's hard to balance in this sort of lateral position. Jab, two, three, I jumped the gun there, sorry about that. Good, two more at tempo, which you can go at any pace you like. Last one at tempo, and if you're ready, you can go for some speed, here we go. Jab, kick, kick, jab, kick, 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 kick. You gotta transfer your weight fast. Kick, 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 jab. My body parts got confused. That's hard, that was hard for me. How did you do? How's your intensity level on that one to 10 scale? Are you doing all right? Believe it or not, we're gonna try it one more way. Back behind us. How's your heart rate and breathing? Can you talk? You must be able to talk. All right, get that left hand balance check. We're gonna use our right elbow, but first we're gonna do three left back kicks real slow. Look at it, two, three, and then that right elbow. Oh, slow again, three, two, one, and to tempo, back kick, two, three, oh. you don't have to make those sound effects, but it's kind of fun and it's cathartic. Lead your eyes to that back kick. Put some power into it as much as it feels good to you. You can keep your hand on that chair the whole time. I recommend keeping it really close because this is a hard one for our balance. Good, one more at tempo. And if you want, super fast. Kick, 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 huh. One more time, and how do you feel? Whew, I'm feeling it. Let's get behind our chair and use our imaginary jump rope and our imaginary speed bag. You ready? You stay there behind your chair so you can use at least one hand on your slow jump rope. And I'm gonna come out from behind my chair so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. I want you to come up on your tiptoes with your slow jump rope. Now you can keep one hand on your chair and alternate hands with your jump rope. Or you could just do both hands on the chair and just do your toe raises, strengthening your calves. You ready to go a little faster? Jump rope. Or both hands if you're feeling it. How about faster? A little hippity hop, but we're never leaving the ground. Keep your knees soft. How about faster? You could just move your feet. A little quick jog. Backwards fast. 
Can you feel that jump rope? Just like when you were a kid. Oh, you hardly see kids jump rope anymore, but it's a great activity for them as well. All right, one more time, should you choose, on the left side of your chair. We're gonna get that um, right foot slightly ahead of the left. We're gonna use that left knee three times slow. Engage the core, keep the right hand on the chair, and then we're going to cross. So slow one more time. And then try it at tempo, three knees, left, two, three, cross. This is hard. Keep your core engaged. You can always tap that toe down in between the knees or not, but let's do one more at tempo. And if you like, fast, lift, two, three, punch, lift, two, three, punch, lift. You don't have to pulse it, but you can if you like. That's hard. How about two more fast like this? And march it out. Woo. Okay, to the side. Right hand can touch that chair. Oh, we're running out of time. That was our 10 minute interval. Good news, how do you feel? <laughs> One to 10? Where are you with your breathing? Can you talk? If you can't talk, that's like a nine or a 10. So when we're doing a lot of bracing here, it, it does make it difficult to breathe. But that's part of the challenge that makes your muscles and your whole body work together better. Transitioning to the chair for strength work again, there'll be an option to stand up. So before you squat or get seated, however you get seated, get your heels actually touching the chair. If you want to alter your stance, you can have your heels just to the outside of the chair and do a wider stance. But don't put your feet right smack dab together. With our feet a little wider, we use more inner thighs, hamstrings, and butt muscles instead of these front leg quad muscles. So I want to put my heels on the outside of the chair and see how that feels. Keep the hips drifting back as you squat. Try them up with a little power. If you want, you can go down, two, three, and up. Squeeze your glute cheeks together and forward as you power up, if it feels good. If it doesn't, do it how it feels great for you. But I feel with this wider stance, I feel more engagement, more recruitment of the whole lower body. Maybe you could try that and see how it feels. Just make sure you're aligned on your knees. It doesn't get all wonky. Knees like to be going the same direction, more or less, as your toes, okay? That's for good knee health. All right, we're gonna need our ball. We're gonna need our, wait, we're gonna need a drink of water. So step to the side, lean to the side. And have a sip. I run into a couple of you downtown and here and around in the store, the post office. And uh, I know some of you are just tired of doing the same old thing. I try to vary it, but um, please stick with some basic level of movement every day. It's so important, okay? We're going to do our strength set again using our ball and our weights again. So. It's a little bit tricky, so take your time, get your weight up here on your right thigh or anywhere on your lap, and get your hips, oh, I'd say halfway back in your chair, and get your ball behind that right calf and knee so that you've got a good bit of the chair braced between your lower leg and the ball. Now, see how it feels to draw your heel back and try to squeeze that ball. This is going to use the hamstrings or the back of the thigh muscles on the right side. They, they can cramp up once. Sometimes that's a very crampy place. So if you get feeling like you're going to have a charlie horse, just stop. But see how that feels, strengthening the hamstrings. 
Excellent. Give it a break, but keep the ball there with some basement level tension. Put that weight in your right hand, and we're going to hinge slightly forward just to brace with our left arm on the lap. We're going to plant that right elbow on the body and do a bicep curl. Now, if it's too much weight for one arm, just help with the other, okay? But challenge yourself, and then if you like, you can add that bicep leg curl with your bicep arm curl. Keep the upper arm pasted to the body. <laughs> This is challenging for me because I'm lifting, I don't know, what is one and a quarter gallons? It's about 10 pounds, but the fluid is kind of moving and that makes it also a little bit challenging because I have to stabilize it through the motion. So I'm feeling like I'm about done. It's all achy burning sensation here as well as here. Well, let's see if we share that love and put the ball on the left High on the calf, scooching back in our chair to create a little basement tension there. And see how it feels to squeeze the left heel back. If you're having trouble with this, try scooching back in the chair a little bit. Just like that. And you can feel it on the back of that left thigh. Now, take a break, but keep the ball there. And let's get ready for our left arm bicep curls. So pace that upper arm somewhere on the body. Do see if you can hinge slightly forward and support on this right lap. Keep the belly engaged or the abdominals. And do a left arm curl. If that feels good and you want, add back that left hamstring curl. Ooh, this is challenging for me. I hope it's challenging for you. Do your best, and then you'll get to take a little rest, and there'll be active rest. We'll add or try to work on some other parts of our body. I'm going to try for two more. Whew. I didn't count, but I'm being careful not to just drop that weight. Keep a little tension. And by keeping that tension, i.e. not hanging at the bottom, we're getting more out of our movement because tension against a resistance, in this case our jug of fluid it, and, or our ball, and we're squeezing the air, tension against our muscular force is what creates greater muscular strength and eventually bone density too. So now let's take that ball and place it behind our, oh, maybe mid back region. Take your time weights on your lap and go ahead and place that ball in a place where you can keep your spine long and strong brace with your abdominals dig your heels in and just push keeping all four chair legs on the ground push into that ball squeezing your gluteals Pulling your navel in, breathing as you squish the air out of the ball, perhaps. Excellent. Dig those heels in and you can feel it. This is called a hyperextension. We're extending our spine using our hips, low back, and backs of the thighs. Okay, take a break. We're going to do a right over left over the rainbow. So just keep a basement level of tension on that back and pay attention and make a small rainbow. Follow the jug with your eyes. Now, if you like, press into the jug as you bring it up and over. I'm sorry, press into the ball and press your heels into the ground and make the rainbow bigger if it feels good. Just a couple more over and backs. And we're going to switch now with left over right. Keep the abdominals tight. Start with a basement level of tension on the ball, digging those heels in, and start with a smallish rainbow, tracking the weight, in this case my yellow jug, with my 
eyes and a little bit with my chest rotating. Now I'm pressing into the ball and making that movement bigger if I want a bigger challenge. Just a couple times up and over again. I'm going to call these over the rainbow. <laughs> and then, oh, I felt that here. And as well as in the shoulders, you should have felt it all around the shoulder. There are three groups of deltoids, front or anterior, middle, medial, and then rear or, in, or posterior. We're going to take our time, get that ball, and place our weight under our chair or somewhere where it's not going to trip us up because we're going to work on a V-O-R exercise. V is for vestibular or inner ear and O is for ocular. These two pieces of information provide good in, um, input to your brain and then your brain puts out output in the form of movement or stability or balance or flexibility, whatever you need, want. So there's another very important piece of information or input that's coming to your brain and that's proprioception. When we're seated, we don't get as much from our lower body, but that's little cells in our joints that send information like pitch, yaw, and roll or uh, position in, with relation to the rest of the world of your body. So if you're standing when we do this exercise, you'll get a lot more out of it. But I'm going to show it seated first. Those of you who wish to stand, you're going to be on the right hand side of your chair and you must use your left hand on your chair just with a light touch. Always keeping your fingers within a millimeter of your chair for safety, okay? So whether you're seated or standing, you're going to hold the ball palm up in your right hand and you're going to sit as tall or stand as tall as you can and keep that left hand near the chair or touching it with one fingertip and we're going to simply look at our ball with our eyes without moving our head we're going to move the ball and stretch our eyes to the right and to the left just a small range of motion if you're standing this might make you feel wobbly if you want to challenge yourself, you can move it a little faster, tracking only with your eyes, not with your head moving. No head movement. No. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to stand and show you other ways to make it more challenging. You could put most of your weight in your left foot and pull up to your kickstand on your right. Stand or sit tall, and you could do this seated as well, okay? And we're going to, again, look at the ball, keep our finger really close to the chair, try not to move the head as you take the ball, small range of motion, and it looks super simple, but it's not. And then you can make it faster. You could try it on one foot, and then it starts to get pretty hard. Or you could try it with a staggered stance. You could also try it by moving your head and not the ball. So keeping the ball with your eyes laser focus on the ball. Ball is still, you can move your head. And this is hard for me. I hope it's hard for you. You can always grab your chair or step out of your kickstand or your uh, staggered stance or your one-legged stance and step out, okay? Let's do the same on the other side. I encourage you to start with no head movement and then move the ball slowly, tracking it just with your eyes in your most stable, comfortable, confident position. And then try a different foot position and then begin to move the head, if that makes sense, and keep the ball still. In that order, it'll be appropriately, safely adding challenge. So once again, whether you're seated or standing, Palms up on the left hand, eyes laser focused on the ball, weight equal in both feet, try without moving your head and keeping your right hand right next to the chair, try moving the ball and just tracking it with your eyes. 
it's normal and typical for the head to want to move. And then you can move it smaller, faster. Now, for more challenge and a good progression, you can move into your kickstand with most of your weight in your right foot and a little toe touching down. Nice pulling up through your posture, whether you're seated or standing, and try the same thing. Eyes laser focused on the ball, moving it slowly, tracking it with your eyes, no head movement, smaller, faster range of motion, noticing things flashing by in the background with your peripheral vision. I told you we would practice thing exercise of peripheral vision. This is it. Now, if you're going to progress and you want to make it harder, again, you could go to a one-legged stance or a staggered stance, that's what I'm going to choose. Pull up through your posture, whether you're seated or standing. And this time, we're going to keep our eyes laser focused on the ball, but move our head, and that adds more challenge. So keep that right hand near the chair. Ah, okay, this is tricky. So keeping the ball still, turn your head, but keep your eyes laser focused on that ball. If you feel your feet grabbing the floor, holding on for dear life like you're standing on a tightrope, this is appropriate challenge for you. Knowing you can grab your chair or step out off of that tightrope. Those are your safety nets. I haven't talked about VOR drills a lot lately, but they're very, very good. If you don't believe me, you could talk to your doctor about it. If you haven't seen your eye doctor in a while, it's time to make that appointment. See your eye doctor. Seniors especially, everyone needs to have their eyes checked annually, but seniors especially maybe need to have their eyes checked more than annually. I'm going to put my ball down over here. We're going to take a load off and stretch and just breathe. And I think I've about used up our time, but if you want to get a sip of water, please do that. I'm going to give us a little seated stretch. Check the time here. Oh yeah, well, that's all right. There's always time for a little bit of stretching and relaxing. The warm up and the cool down are very, very important. In fact, probably the most important parts of your exercise program. So if you ever start late, just start slowly, gradually. And if you ever stop early, stop slowly, gradually. And in general, that's a great approach for safety with regard to everything we're doing movement-based. It is important to add a little bit of speed, but we want to do it gradually and thoughtfully and safely. So let's sit towards the front edge of the chair. Take a deep, deep breath. Open your hands, stretching the forearms and the hand flexors. Stretching the biceps, stretching the fronts of the shoulders, lift your heart, and as you exhale, as if you're blowing out a little candle, arch your back. Do that again. Nice, at your own pace, inhale. Breathing ideally in through your nose. Exhale, through your nose or your mouth. And we're going to do it one more time. Inhale, think of filling your lungs from the bottom to the top, and then exhale, push out all the stale air. Excellent. Let's take a right leg extended out front, left knee, inhale, let's take a bow. Keep your chin up. Think forward, but let your arm rest down wherever it is on your lap, whether it's on your thigh, your knee, your shin. Stretch your toes up closer towards your nose and stretch your nose closer to me. Gently kind of stretch your tailbone back and sit tall. Let's try that on the other side. Extend the left leg, support on the right lap. Inhale, fully long, strong back stays long and strong as you hinge forward and take a graceful bow. Let that left arm lower down towards your leg. 
but let your left toe drift up, up, up towards the ceiling. And your left nose, your left nose. You only have one nose, I hope. <laughs> nose forward. Ah, okay. I'm going to assign you some homework today. Um, take three to five minutes today and every day to just work on your breathing and your mindfulness. You can take a little break to declutter your brain, breathe deeply, turn off all your devices, sit in a quiet, happy space and think quiet, happy, peaceful thoughts. And that will do your stress levels a lot of good. Um, I wanted also to assign some homework for you to read. <laughs> I'm wearing my Love Your Library shirt because I love our local library. It is the best for the size of our community. Wow. And um, I, I just want to encourage you. They have so many great systems that can deliver your books to you. And they're doing everything they can to make it safe. So um, right now I'm, I've got some ideas from the RBG workout. Go, girls, uh, women. And I'm reading about diversifying power. It's National Women's uh, History Month. And then this is not by a woman, but it's by a local author, Scott Geisel. And I'm reading it so that I can participate in a book dis discussion at the Senior Center. Anyway, I say all that because I want to encourage you to take advantage of all of our really, really robust local resources, folks. And wear your mask when you do. And be safe. And see you soon. Keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.